darkness, then the pain, the, and the haze, then the awareness, also his, the pain was constant, but sometimes buried and uneasy and composed, which he supposed was relief, with the first frail memory stopping the beasting, or race back into life with the woman's sinking breath. The next real memory, her fingers, when pushing through something in his mouth, as he regular individuals, something like terra capsules, or when there is no water, or he sat in his mouth or when melted, when they melted, was an incredibly bitter taste, when the will like a taste of aspirin. But it would have been good with the spit of that bitter taste out. But he knew better than to do it because of his case was brought the high tide over the pillings. Pillings. It's pillings. They were too okay. They were fine now. Just provide us hush. You just know. Hush. Shh. And made the scene go away for a while. So these uh, things came uh, widely. It spread into the visuals. The sin, the pain itself. Thus to reduce his ear tones, but it was as they reversed the beach killing, he made himself echo the thought, because of nothing forever, although the child has been have sloth into the horsery. Outside things all increased rapidly into the objective world. Something was bright in of memory and experience and prudence. It had very introduce itself. He was Paul Sheldon. Who wrote the two kinds, the uh, good ones and the best sellers? He had been married and divorced twice. He smoked too much, or had before this, whatever all this was. Something very bad happened, had happened to him, but he was still alive. <laughs> the dark gray cloud you know, that had happened to him since he was still alive and had begun to dissipate faster and faster. Only a while because his number one fan brought him an old clucking royal oh, with the with the grinning scathed mouth the ducky dog voice but the ducky dog could all understand before they received a hell of a jam. That took sense of his mind when he saw her he, he knew was seeing her and it must be surely have understand how before. He knew he was understanding her. Why did he succeed to such a uh, such dull, dull, dour city images with her? Whenever it came to the room, she thought of given images, worshipped by a certain African tribe, such as novels of the ace, wider Hagen, and the stone, the doom. Uh, the image of Annie Rose, such an African idol, or of she or King Solon's mind, was the most basic, clearly uh, apt. She was a big woman who were ever so large and unwelcoming. The swallow cup blossom under the gray cardigan sweater was always she always wore was seen to have no feminine curves at all. Uh, there was no defined roundness of hip or buttock, or even cap below the endless perpetual dressing of wool skirt that she wore in the house. She retired from her unseen bedroom to put on jeans before going around some side chores. Her body was not a big, you know, but gorgeous. There was a feeling about her cross and her round of the long locks, rather than welcoming offer is that open spaces of areas of hiatus. Uh, hiatus. Most of all, she gave him disturbing sense of solidity, uh, as if she was not blind of a blood vessel leaving on her organs. As if she might have the solid Annie Rose from side to side, top to bottom. He felt more and more convinced that his eyes, which appeared to move, were actually just pain painted on. And then move on. When they moved, the more the eyes approached me, as they would appear to follow you when, whenever you, you move in the room. It was telling. It seemed to be. I made him two fingers were shaped like a bee and attempted to poke him within her nostrils. Mm-hmm. They might go less than an aching but into occurring solid, a finely gilding alteration with a gray cardigan and fluffy house skirts. 
invaded outside of working for a part of someone who is an internal body. It was so feeling that she feels like an idol in the Pullman's novel. It was not like that at all. Like an idol. She gave all the uh, her feelings so free suddenly towards her terror like an idol. She took everyone else. Okay. No, wait, that wasn't quite fair. She did think this and something else. Oh, but she gave him the pills, which were the tide over the pillings. The pills were the tide. Annie Wilkes was the lunar president of the prince, which had pulled them into itself. They seized them on a hundred sail on the waves. And she brought him every six hours. First announcing the prince with only a pair of fingers poking in his mouth. And soon enough, uh, he learned that they stuck eagerly uh, poking fingers in spite of the bitter taste. Mm. It later appeared in the Chronicle sweater of a half dozen skirts, usually the paperback copy of one of his novels, poked under her, her arm as she might appear in the fuzzy pink robe, her face shiny, and you know, so with some sort of cream, which have named the main ingredient easily through to the head never seen through the bottle when she tempted it, the sheepy smell of lotion was was strong and perfumey. She could him out of the throwaway, dreams and sick sleep with the pills nested in her hand, and the proxy moon nested over the window of her with her solid shoulders. After a while, after his alarm had become too great to be ignored, he was able to find out where the who she was feeding him. It was a painkiller with a heavy codeine uh, base called Laurel, which is the reason she had to bring him to the bedpan, which is clearly not because of the diet of bring equally of liquids uh, and gelatin. Earlier, she was in the cloud, and she had to feed him with recipe, but also it's because of the novel. Uh, and trying continuously trying to cause the uh, patients taking it. Another side effect. Another more serious one was for the depression in the sedated p patients. Paul was not particularly sensitive, but he had a heavy smoker for nearly 18 years. But breathing, um, but his breathing had stopped, not less on one occasion. There might be some been others in the haze, but did not remember. That was time she gave him mouth to mouth. It was given the things in which happened. The later comes the session that killed and nearly killed them with an accidental overdose, but she didn't know how much she was about to she believe she did. It was only one of the things about Annie that scared her. She discovered that three things were certainly about the ten days after emerged from the dark cloud and the fact that Annie Wilkes has been a great ideal of novel. She had, in fact, embraced the one had drugs of all kinds. The second one was hooked on novel. The third one was Annie Wilkes, and it just like who was there with Annie Wilkes was dangerously crazy. The darkness had prolonged the pain and the storm cloud. He had begun to remember what from the darkness and what happened to him. He was trying to have the after a traditional uh, when the sleep when the sleeper wakes. Uh, Question had told him he was a little town of Sidewinder in Colorado. In action, she told him about the uh, the read of his eight novels. The least twice had and some of her very favorites, the misery novels, four or five, maybe six times. He had wished to wish he, he would write them faster. She would have hardly been able to believe that. Her patient was really that Paul Shelton, even checking the ID in his wallet. Where is my wallet, by the way? he asked. I kept it safe for you, she said, her smile suddenly collapsed into a narrow watchfulness. Uh, he did not like it that much. When discovering it, he tell us it almost occurred in the summer twilight of the Midwest, smiling into the meadow. Do you think I'd steal something out of it? No, of course not. I just... He is still with my own life on it. My, uh, my life is outside the room. Outside the pain. You know, sorry, it 
the very time there was a pink string of bubble gum in it with the kid pulled in his mouth when he was born. And I must have leaked out on it before the pill came. Just what, Mr. Man? The she president looked too solemn and the alarm, which now I looked looking blacker and blacker. But the soldier was turning to an earthquake. And her, her brow was darned with a sudden image of taking that lava throwing him over her solid shoulder. It was like a burrow and slap to him over a stone wall and taking him outside, a few rain to a snow drift. He would freeze to death before he could. His leg would bob and scream. It's just like father always told me to keep my eye on my wallet, he said, astonished how easily had this lie came out. His father made a career not knowing what to be called as more of the absolute he had to do as so far as Paul could remember. I offered him some advice his entire life on Paul's 14th birthday. His father had given him a red devil a condom in a foil envelope. Put that in your wallet, Roger, Roger Shelby said. And if you ever get excited while you're making out of the drive-in, and the second book was because getting too excited you can slip on and stop that on. And too many bastards in this world already. I don't want to see you at the army at 16. Now Paul went on. I guess you can tell me to keep my eye on my wallet sometimes and stuff for good. If I offended you, I'm truly sorry. She relaxed, smiled, her curls and closed. Her summer form was nodded cheerfully once again. He thought about pushing his hands through that smile and closing nothing in the flexible darkness. No offense taken. It's a safe place. Wait, I got something for you. If she left to return with something with a bowl of soup, there were vegetables floating in it. He was not able to eat much. He ate more than he thought. He said he seemed clean. He was he ate while the soup told him so what happened and he remembered uh, and he supposed it was good to know. What happened turned up to be with the leg shattered. But the matter that came up to the knowledge was concerning as a character of a story, a play, a character whose history is not created by fiction. She had gone to the sideline in a four wheel drive to feed the food for the livestock for a few groceries. Also checked out the, the, the paperbacks of Wilson's Drug Center and had been on the Wednesday instead of almost those two weeks ago. Another paperback that came on Tuesday. I was actually thinking of you, she said, spooning the mouth into his, the soup into his mouth, affectionately wiped away with a little of the corner of his napkin. That's why that makes a remarkable coincidence, don't you see? I was hoping Misery's child was funny I was be out in paperback, but no such luck. A storm came out of the way, she said. Well, before until noon today, the weather forecast has been for to be easier south toward New Mexico in strange of Palouse. Yes, he said, remembering it. They should turn, and that's why I went in the first place. He tried to shift his weight from the result, an awful thought of pain thing on any ground. Don't do that, she said. If you get those legs working of yours talking, Paul, they won't shut up. And I, and I can't give you any more pills for, for two hours. I'm giving you too much as it is. Why am I not in the hospital? This is the that's the only the question uh, that I want to see I that wants it asking. But he wasn't sure of a question either of him or wanted asked. Not yet anyway. When I got back to the feed store, Tony Roberts told me I better to step on for if I get back there before the storm hit. And I said, How far how him how far are we from this town? A ways, he said while the rain sinking out from the window. And there was a queer individual of silence, and Paul was frightened over the thought in her face, because the thought was nothing but a black nothing of a which was folding to an airplane meadow, a darkness where no flowers grew on which it might uh, be a lawn. It was the face of a woman who is the observed from his vernal traditions of landmarks of her life, a woman. Who has forgotten uh, not only the memory of the process but of his his memory itself. He had been torn in a mental asylum many years ago when he was researching misery. His first uh, book had been the main source of income of the eight years. He had a book where purposely this unlocked 
The war was initiated when the Count's reigner, which had frightened him, no such courage was in there a vow compression that, that he might have or her thoughts or became as much as he imagined. Her physical self, solid, first unchallenged, and social hanging. And slowly, her face cleared. Her thoughts seemed to flow back into it. She realized her flowing was a tiny bit wrong. She wasn't filling up like a pond or a tidal pool. She was warming up. Yes, she is warming up like a small electricity gadget. A toaster, maybe a heating pad. I said to Tony, that storm is going south. She spoke slowly at first, then groggily. And her words began to catch up as normal and hints of the feel of normal or controversial brightness. I was alerted. Everything she had been saying was a little offbeat. Listening to Annie, well, good Annie was listening to the song playing in the wrong key. But, she said, he had changed his mind. Oh, poo, I, I said. I better get him on my horse and ride. Uh, I say to the town again, Miss Wilkes, she said. They're saying the radio is going to go to the proper either and nobody is prepared. Yes, of course I had to get back. There's no way to feed the animals but me. The nearest people are the, are the Roidmen, and they're miles away here. Besides, the Roidmen don't like me. And she cast an eye suddenly on him and rolled back. And didn't reply as she tapped the spoon against the bowl in a different fashion. Done? Yes, I'm full. Thanks. It was really good. You have a lot of we have a lot of life spots. Besides, it was he was all he was already thinking. If you do, that means you have some help. I I made a laugh. Help was an important word. Uh, something is a word. Something you know what it means. Not very much, she said. A half dozen hen lame hens, two cows and misery. He blinked. <laughs> she laughed. You don't think it's very nice naming the sow after the brave and beautiful woman you made up? Well, what was her name? It meant disrespect. After a moment, she added, She's very friendly. <laughs> the woman then regarded her nose for a moment and became a sow, which down a few listening whiskers and then moved her chin and made a cake sound. Oink, 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 oink. Paul looked at her, white eyed. She did not notice she had gone away again. Her gaze, dim and musing, her eyes, her eyes held into the reflection which went to the bed table, which twice her reflected dwelling faintly in each. At least it gave a faint start and said, I got about five miles and so started to keep back. It came with that one shoes and it does. I kept creeping along with my lights on, and then I saw your car off the road, off turn, overturned. She looked at the disappointment. You didn't have your lights on. You took it took me by a surprise, Paul. He said, remembering uh, the moments of surprise. He did not remember what he had been quite drunk. I stopped, and I've been uh, up late. The last three degrees since we really have not very Christian, I know. But there are three inches on the road already, and if they did a four-wheel drive, I can't be sure it's going on again. The forward motion that the easier thing to see yourself. I'll probably get all caught up riding at Curia and Curia. Mm. At the top of the big hill past the boysman for the flat a while, so I pulled over and soon I heard groaning. That was you, Paul. And she gave him a, 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 a mental grin for the first time, clearly. Yes, yeah, the thought of severing Paul Sheldon's mind. I'm in trouble here. This woman is not right.